Honkai Star Rail has just added a drink mixing event. I know nothing about Honkai Star Rail. It's like looking in a mirror. Can anything in these videos go right? Well, that didn't work. We're not doing any milk. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm doing it again. Oh God. Quick course correction. I feel like I kind of nailed it. Woo! Look at Mr. Bigwig. Oh, I'm getting more into this tank. I don't know if I'll make anything as good as this is. And I am having a great time. Hello, welcome to my bar, AKA my kitchen. So this morning I woke up to a message from my good friend Man Mode informing me that apparently Honkai Star Rail has just added a drink mixing event, a permanent event where you get to mix and make drinks for customers and act like a bartender. Now I needed to film something this week, so I went, hey, that's a good idea. He then informed me that I would have to actually play through the entire game to get to that point. So thank you so much to Man Mode for joining me in a call and doing this event and filming it all. All of the gameplay footage you're gonna see is courtesy of him. Also, by the way, there's like a massive storm going on outside. If you hear some rain or some thunder or maybe even some hail, that's just part of the ambiance now. I'm gonna be honest with you. I know nothing about Honkai Star Rail. The main thing I know is Gallagher because he's a bartender and I mean, let's be honest, it's like looking in a mirror. I have technically played it once at Anime Expo in 2022. I also got all of this free stuff, which means, yes, I am a better fan than you. All right, that bit's over. Now to put all of this away and it's gonna go sit back in the corner of my room. It's collecting dust for a year and a half now. So this event takes place on Penacone, which I guess is a new planet. I will say, I love the style of Penacone. Futuristic art deco mob shit. I mean, that is, mwah, love that. Uh, love the characters that I've seen from there. Siobhan in this event. I'd let her make me worse. But that, that, that's enough stalling. I've already established, I don't know anything about this. So I don't know what insightful commentary you were hoping to hear from me on that front, but you're not gonna get it. What you are gonna get is some fun drink recipes, or at least, my best attempt at recreating them from the Dream Jolt Hostelry. Ho hostelry. Hostelry. Maybe the H is silent. Hostelry. Oh, I had pizza before this and it's giving me pizza throat. Uh. Um, also, I'm pretty sure there was a drink mixing event in Genshin at some point. If somebody could just let me know I'm not crazy on that front, because I'm way too lazy to Google it, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've got drinks to make. I don't have time for that. All right, this one is a, a, a lot less structured. Can you tell I decided to film this one today? I've got a few ideas here jotted down. Some are based on the ingredients that go in, and then some are just kind of based on, well, sort of the name. I'm, I will spoil that one. Imagine Sunrise is, it just looks like a tequila sunrise. So that one didn't really need to be all that complicated. And then other ones are more like actual recipes where I am trying to recreate the actual appearance of the drink, which is gonna be tough in some cases. If you've played the event or you look any of these up, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of layering in these drinks. A lot of, in some places, like bordering on impossible levels of layering, especially for someone not as talented as I am. We're gonna do our best on that front. Also, I'd just like to state they did make this event specifically for me, because if you look at the bartending set on the counter in game, it looks exactly like mine. It is laid out in exactly the same fashion. One to one, it is the same set, mine is just black. All right, let's 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 get into it. How many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <gasps> oh, I've got an idea. Finally, a use for my D&D shit in this video. We're just gonna roll a die and then we'll, we'll make whichever one I land on. We're gonna do four, which means four for another video. If you wanna hit that like and subscribe button right now, and hey, become a member, and you might even get to see it earlier than the rest, and you'll be a better person or something. I don't know. Anyway, seven. Oh, cool, this is the one I wanted to make first anyway. The beautiful enemy. Okay, so the beautiful enemy consists of one part practitioner pepper, one part soothing soda, you stir, and then you add puffer goat milk on top. 
I'm gonna warn you right now, we're not doing any milk. So this one is much more about recreating the appearance. That color, one thing immediately came to my mind, and that is this Victoria Indigo Gin. A butterfly pea blossom gin, more recognizable name brand, is gonna be Empress 1908, but this was $20 cheaper. Now, a lot of these drinks, because they don't really want you to have like alcohol, um, the closest thing is that there is a champagne in the ingredients. Everything is a soda or syrup or jam, so all of the drinks fit. Thus, a lot of ours are going to, not all of them, but quite a few end up having some kind of soda in them. So, gin, fizz, and a white head, it's a gin fizz. We're just gonna make an Empress 1908 gin fizz. Egg whites are gonna add that nice layer on top, and of course the club soda is gonna give us the fizz. That's pretty easy. That's a pretty simple drink. What can I serve this in? Um, I don't have a coupe. Let's put it in this. Why not? All right, for our beautiful enemy, we are going to start with two ounces of our Butterfly Pea Blossom Gin, followed by one full ounce of lemon juice. Do we want to freshly squeeze it? God, fine. Fine! I'll squeeze the juice. Oh. Perfect. One ounce lemon juice, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, and then one egg white, which is approximately three tablespoons of this liquid egg white, which is one and a half ounces. One, a half. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm doing it again. Oh God. And this should hopefully come out the nice purple that it does in the game. Ice. So this is more ice. Well, A, gin fizz needs ice. My reading is more ice equals like actual ice in the drink, and then little ice is like a rock. That's kind of my reading on how you should be serving it. We're gonna give it a nice shake. Did that foam up? Oh, yes, okay. I think you're supposed to technically dry shake when you use egg white, but I've said in other videos, uh, this thing doesn't seal right unless it gets cold, so not using ice was just gonna be a bit of a pain. Let's look at the first step of our beautiful enemy. Woo! Oh, that is very full. This glass is not tall enough. Hold on! Good thing I've got a taller one. And now, the finished suit. Holy shit! I had no clue who was gonna do that. Can anything in these videos go right, please? Well, the socks are gonna be wet for the rest of the video, I guess. Final step of our gin fizz is to top it off with some club soda after it's gotten all over your counter. That is, whoo, oh my gosh. That looks just about perfect now that it's settling. If it was in a coupe, do we try the margarita glass? We might try the margarita glass after. It's not a coupe, but it's closer to what you see in the game. This has a mini wine glass. This is not a mini drink. How did it get so much? It's like three ounces. The egg white, that's how. Well, let's get our shot first, and then I'll take a sip. Oh wait, the finishing touch, lemon wheel, because that is an option in the game. It's not what goes with the beautiful enemy, but I don't have a Pepeshi fluff ball, so we're gonna have to live with that. It's not as purple as it appears in the game, but that's pretty gosh darn close to what I wanted. I guess the egg white took a lot of the color out, or probably the lemon juice did. That's pretty close, right? I'm not crazy. The purple into a clear, into the, the white head. Let's see what it tastes like. That's just all egg white. Who's good at straw? Here we go. Oh, well that's rather pleasant. That really kind of just is an emphasis on the gin. This Empress, I mean, it's citrusy. So the lemon juice, while you taste it a little bit, is really just kind of holding up the gin in here. The club soda is just giving it a nice, fun, bubbly feeling. The egg white adds a nice, fun texture and flavor to it. This lemon wheel is not doing anything. It's just there to look good. That is like a delightful gin malt, not malt, float. I mean, it's a fizz, so I guess we can call that the same category. I feel like I'm in a soda shop. That's what I feel. I feel like I'm in a soda shop, which is pretty much what the Dream Jolt host story is. So I feel like I kind of nailed it. If I could do anything to make it better, 
I cut back on the lemon juice. Or, uh, I did an ounce. I might cut that to three quarters or maybe even half an ounce. Because we lost a lot of the purple. And that might have been the egg white too, honestly. I don't hate the flavor. This is citrusy enough on its own that I feel like you would not miss that half ounce of lemon juice if you cut it out. That goes down way too easy. It doesn't feel like you're drinking. It feels like I'm drinking soda. It, it just is a very pleasant time. I'm really happy with this. What's it look like in the margarita glass? Okay, that's a little closer to the end game appearance. I told you how you could probably fix that. So that's good enough for me. I feel like that's probably pretty close to what it would taste like at the Dream Jolt. Uh, I gotta go finish this. All four in one, baby. Let's go. Okay, one down, three to go. Let's see what is next. That's, that's the same number. Let's see what's next. Oh, this is the one I spoiled. Let's make an imagined sunset, AKA a tequila sunrise. Or an imagined sunrise, hold on. Yeah, that's just, that's a tequila sunrise. Right at the bottom, orange in the middle. We might be able to do some champagne. That's what's making the top weight. We might be able to do that. So in game, this uses rejuvenating soda water, odd concoction, and then you stir, and then you add Dream Jam and Stellar Champagne on top. So I think the champagne is actually our... Well, actually, maybe we'll just throw champagne on top just to ruin the drink at the end. Why not? Uh, this is our rejuvenating soda water, this gold tequila. Uh, orange juice is our Dream Jam. Odd concoction is gonna be the grenadine. So, first we need ice. We don't actually need to mix this one, which is fun. We just need to pour it in. So we're gonna go ahead and start with two ounces of gold tequila. What does it taste like? Oh, that's gonna be good. I'm going through what this is about to taste like in my mind, and I am happy about it. And four ounces of orange juice. Let's go ahead and measure it out, why not? We'll be precise for the video, I guess. One, two, three, and four. All right. Well, that was just orange juice. Next up, this is the delicate part. This is the part that makes it look the way it does in the game and how this is supposed to. So let's hope I don't fuck it up. We're going to pour the grenadine over the back of this spoon and it should sink all to the bottom and create a nice cool layered effect. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that looks right. Do we put champagne on top? What, what could that do to it? It's still carbonated, that's the good news. Woo! Let's follow the game's instructions on the end here. This is a real drink right now, so you can stop here. But uh, we're doing Honkai Star Rail justice today. So very carefully pour this onto the top. That, well that looks right. That looks Absolutely perfect. And just to throw in a little garnish, orange, and a cherry. Now it looks like the sun peeking out. And with that, we have successfully created the imagined sunrise. Once I started messing with the orange, it did mix the champagne a little more in, but you saw it. You saw it was layered right. It looked right for a minute there. Let's see if it just tastes good. Yeah. Yeah, actually. That makes total sense. I mean, orange juice, and champagne is a mimosa. So it's kind of like you've just combined a mimosa and a tequila sunrise. Damn, that's, that's actually really good. That's just a good ass string. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I don't know how much credit I can really take for this one. But it is just a tequila sunrise that I put champagne on top of, which was the game's idea to begin with. That, I, whoa, wow. That absolutely worked. That's weird. It's so fun. Every sip, you're getting a different flavor. Oh my God, it, it's everything. Cause the champagne is at the top, so it's like hitting first, but then it turns into a mimosa, but then you get the tequila. It's like a mimosa, but with what I lovingly call that tequila stank. I love tequila. I've come to really enjoy tequila, but it's got that stank to it, you know? And I, I you know, when you want that tequila stank, you want it, you want that stank. And that's what that tastes like. Oh my God, I'm drinking that too fast. Ooh, that is a good beverage that I will probably continue to make. So far, this is the winner in both appearance and flavor. If you want it to look closer, 
I would say you could pour it in the grenadine first, but then you run the risk of everything else going into it and like splashing it up. If you think you need as much grenadine as is in it, or as it, as it looks, based on my recipe, you don't. Don't do that. It's too much grenadine. Dream Jolt, whole story. You made a good drink with that one. If you're not gonna hire me, Dream Jolt, at least tell me where you are. I don't know how to get to Penacone from here, so you can send a ship to pick me up so I can visit your store. I would drink several of these. You would have to have someone carry me out. Mr. Bigwig. That's the one name I remember, because look at Mr. Bigwig. Look at Mr. Bigwig. I love him. Oh, oh, I'm getting more into the stank. The champagne is running out and we're getting into the tequila. That drink changes. That's crazy. The more I drink, the, the more there is to discover. And I haven't even hit the grenadine, really. So it's way at the bottom. I'm so excited about this drink. Wow. So the mimosa flavor has milded out a lot. And now it's just kind of becoming... No, it hasn't. I'm lying. The, the orange juice and the champagne have mixed together more. So it's less champagne into orange and more now it's just like a mimosa at the top and then the tequila slides inside that's a horrible way to have phrased that it's too late i've said it i'm gonna end up drinking this whole thing in like t five minutes this is so good i'm so happy i made that i'm genuinely so happy i made that that's really that's really really good i haven't even made the other two yet if you make anything in this video it should be this one i'm calling it right now I don't know if I'll we'll make anything as good as this is. And it's the easiest to layer, so it actually looks like it would in game. The Tequila Sunrise is already an easily layerable drink. It's it's fantastic, it's fantastic. I'm, I'm repeating myself now. I'm gonna try and slow myself down. I've still got two more to do, and I'm halfway through this drink in like five minutes. So we're gonna calm down, and I will see you in the next one. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, real quick, spoilers for a drink I make later. I am so happy that you've watched this, thank you so much. And if you are enjoying this video, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing, doing all the YouTube things, and maybe if you really enjoyed this, becoming a member. You get access to early videos, exclusive videos, all of my stream VODs, and cut down version of those stream VODs when I make fun exclusive drinks only for members. Seriously, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of this, and I really appreciate your support. It goes a very, very, very long way, even if you just like, comment, and subscribe. So thank you so much for watching this video, and I hope you continue to enjoy as much as I have, because this is way past the fourth drink, and I am having a great time. Anyways, cheers. That was a terrible idea. Oh God. I can't even redo that shot. Okay, so that last, that last drink was very good. Once I got into the grenadine, it became so much sweeter. Uh, that was a pleasant experience from top to bottom. Aces. I know you didn't get to see me experience the grenadine bit, so I just wanted to mention that. I also realized I had one more button undone on my shirt than I thought I did the whole time. So, sorry for that. To make it up to you, I have now tucked it in though, so I look a little more dapper, just a tiny bit. Anyway, we got we got two more to go, and I'm already feeling them. For those who don't know, I shoot the show alone, and I don't make enough money to pour out those drinks. So I do have to drink all of them between shots. There is like an hour, you know, between each one, but I did have to have two drinks already, and I've got to do two more before the end of the night. So let's get to it. Six! Ooh! That is the Metropolitan Rome. Immediately, if you know some drinks, Metropolitan, Cosmopolitan. Duh! And if you look at it, the bottom of the Metropolitan Rome is the exact kind of shade of pink as a Cosmopolitan is. So there you go, it's a, it's a Cosmopolitan with, uh, we're gonna put something on top, which we will get to at the end of the drink for that layering effect. A Metropolitan Rome in game consists of no ice, two ultimate syrups, and ice soul glad, which from what I understand is like just an in-game soda brand. I think you can correct me if I'm wrong. I probably am. I usually am. Uh, like I said, we're gonna start with a cosmopolitan because that's that exact kind of shade of pink. Cosmopolitan consists of... 
Okay, I'm asking Leo Vesper, Martini, Cosmo. Uh, I couldn't find Citron Vodka, so this is just gonna be plain old Tito's. That's a lie, I could find Citron Vodka. I didn't want to spend $35 on a small bottle of it. Quantro, we're using triple sec. Lime juice, we've got lime juice. I'm getting a little too tipsy to do freshly squeezed. And cranberry cocktail, such as ocean spray. Hey, look at that! And lemon twist for garnish, yeah, fuck that. Actually, we're not gonna do a lemon twist, but it's gonna be good, you'll see. All right, with ice, where'd I put that book? Shit, oh. Can you tell I decided to make this video today? So like I said, I was too lazy to buy citron. So we're doing regular vodka, and it's fine. Fuck it, who cares? There's no citron in the Metropolitan Rome. Huh? It's supposed to be like strawberry puree. I got strawberry puree here. You want me to put that in it? Anyways, actually maybe we will. That'd be a terrible idea. One and a half ounces of vodka. Three quarters of an ounce of triple sec. It's close enough. Uh, it's also all over my counter, so. Oh, that's all over my shirt. <laughs> yeah! That's why I'm wearing a black shirt. So you can't see it. Three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. And then half an ounce of cranberry. I trust the people who invented the cocktail more than I trust myself. So, half an ounce of cranberry. Maybe we'll add some strawberry puree? No, no. Let's keep it simple for you at home. For the folks at home. Add ice and shake. Whew! Clean your counter. That's an important step of the Cosmopolitan is to clean your counter. Your hand's a little sticky, so go ahead and use that on your hands. And if you grew up in my household because your father had OCD, don't worry, I still love him very much, go ahead and wipe your mouth with it. That's definitely safe to do. It's okay, he has medication now. And it's okay, I also have OCD. I'm allowed to make fun of it. Go ahead and get your very slightly chilled martini glass out. We're gonna get strain it. There we go. I'm looking at the image right there and I'm looking at this drink. That's the right color to begin with. Next question is the Ice Soul Glad. So that's our ultimate syrup. The Ice Soul Glad, well, it's gotta be a clear fizzy soda. And what goes well with lime, orange, vodka, and cranberry? Sprite, here is the real question, is how we're gonna get it to layer on top. So we're gonna just go ahead and try it that way. Oh, that's sort of doing it. No, I'm watching it go all the way to the bottom. Well, no, I see a little layer at the top. That's actually working exactly correctly. I might be insane. Yeah, I think I'm crazy. What does that look like on here? Do you see that dividing line? No, I lost it. Oh, well, we've made the decision. Nothing's gonna float on top of that, really. Uh, it sort of looks like it does to a degree kind of at the top. You're gonna be hard pressed to find a soda that's probably gonna sit on top of a Cosmo. We're just gonna run with it. We're gonna top it with Sprite and we're gonna call it at that. This could also be god awful. I might have ruined this. And there you have it. There's Metropolitan Rome, as best as we were able to make it. Cosmopolitan with Sprite on top. Yeah. Woo, woo, woo. Okay, that's not bad. It's just exactly as sweet as you think it would be. With a little bit of sour, that lime juice is doing a lot. I don't hate it, but wow. I didn't expect it to taste that much like lime juice. You might be able to cut the lime juice, if we're being honest. Cut the lime juice down just to like a half ounce. Because I think when the Sprite got in there, it really pulled up the lime. It, it looks about right. It's got the right color at the start, for sure. It's just you're not gonna find anything that's really gonna float on top of this that's gonna look like that color, especially. That would taste good. I mean, that tastes just fine. It's sweet. Not, if you like very sweet things, not unpleasantly so. But the more I get out of my sweet phase, the more I'm feeling that. Very strong lime. You could maybe even cut down the Sprite a little bit to help that. But the Sprite is helping make it very smooth. The sodas in these, that's really kind of the theme. The soda in all of these has really helped like smooth them out. Uh, the sparkling wine, I guess, in 
the last one, but actually, that's getting more pleasant as I go. It's becoming more and more like Sprite Cranberry. The lime juice is given away to the cranberry. That's very pleasant. I'm changing my mind on this. Oh yeah, no, that's good now. <laughs> that had a rough start, but that has that's becoming very pleasant. How to describe it? Sprite cranberry that is rapidly fucking me up. Again, a bit more lime than lemon flavor, for sure. As I'm going, the cranberry is really punching through, having a great time. The vodka, I mean, that's the point of vodka is that you don't taste it, but you really don't taste it. You just feel it, but even then, what you think you're feeling is lime juice. You're like hit it, getting hit by that lime juice flavor and you're saying like, oh, that's what it is. No, it's it's the strength of the vodka that's coming in at you. And do not, do not make this. If you don't like sweet and sugary, this is, this is not for you. If you don't like a Cosmo to begin with, this ain't for you. If you like a Cosmo and want it to taste a little different, then yeah, throw a splash of Sprite on top. I think it just changes it just enough to, to be something more fun and a little smoother. It's sitting up here in, in my mouth. It's not gonna be that deep down flavor. Like it's sitting on the roof of your mouth and like curving up and around your tongue. That's what it feels like. I don't taste anything on my tongue. Like obviously you taste things with your tongue, but it doesn't feel like it's on your tongue. It feels like every flavor is floating above. And when you swallow, it sits like kind of in the back at the top of your throat. It sits in your tonsils up here. That's where your tonsils are, right? Like in your throat, like up here by your uvula. It's in your uvula. Oh, that is three to go. Nope, that's three down. One more to go. Ha, oh, this has been a night. <laughs> I'm gonna go finish this and sit down for a minute. And then uh, I know exactly which one I wanna do last because I just want to make this one. So when we come back, happy sorry. We're back. Shocker, our last thing is going to be the happy sorry. Who could have guessed? If you jumped ahead to this part of the video, I spoiled that at the end of the last segment. Maybe try watching the video in order next time. All right, so the happy sorry, I looked at it. I was looking at it and I was thinking, how, how? That green, but that layer of the brown at the bottom, how are we gonna do that? And I got the idea and I decided that is exactly what I need to do because I love this drink already. And by doing it this way, I think it'll look cool. We well, yeah, have sat on a whiskey. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna honor my dad. We're gonna honor my dad with this one. So we are going to make a whiskey sour, specifically the Boston Sour Berry, but we're gonna do it a little out of order. But first of all, I'm too drunk to remember how I made it. I'm not gonna lie to you. Whiskey sour. Lemon juice? I swear I use lime juice. Lemon juice? We're pulling up liquor.com. Liquor.com, invaluable resource for, see, for these videos. Whiskey sour, bourbon cocktail. Lemon juice? I swear I made it with lime. Okay, now we go to YouTube and we go watch that how to drink video and see if I'm just fucking crazy. Bourbon, lemon juice. Huh. Okay, you know what? I think I made it with lime juice on accident last time. I'm gonna stand by it. I thought it was good. And it's gonna be the right color. So we're gonna do it. I'm too drunk for someone to tell me to do it the right way. <laughs> First step, you are going to use two ounces of bourbon uh, or whiskey. I mean, it is a whiskey sour, but I'm going with bourbon. Very specifically, you cannot have this. This is Hazy Doodle. This is my dad's own blend that he got from a uh, very specific little, there's a place where you go and you can try a bunch of bourbons and then you get to make your own blends and you can order your own blend off of their website or if you're there, you can buy it. So this is his own blend. It's akin to Maker's Mark. So if you want something that tastes the way this will, Maker's Mark will do. That's kind of his bourbon of choice. So two ounces of bourbon. I forgot to start recording on my phone. One ounce. Nope. Three quarters of an ounce. We're gonna go back to Greg. Shout out to Greg from How to Drink, who I have shamelessly stolen a lot of this format from. One ounce of lemon juice. So we're gonna do one ounce of lime juice. Last time I used, um, it was Buzzard's Roost. I'm running out of that. I'm trying to save it, but Buzzard's Roost will go good in here if you have it. One ounce of your simple syrup. This is a one-to-one, -one, so yeah, it's good enough. I need to have that out for the shot. The deeper we are into each video, the harder they are to fill. 
And then we need an egg white, which again, according to my liquid egg whites, is going to be one and a half ounces. Again, you should have dry shaken this without the ice in it, but that doesn't work for me. So now here's the problem. How do we get that layered look? Happy Sour is one Dream Jam, two Fell Blood Energy, and then one Blossom Dew at the top. So how do we accomplish that orange color at the bottom? Well, if you know the Boston Sour, you know that there are Angostura bitters that go on top. When you make a whiskey sour, I guess technically this is a Boston Sour if you do this, put a few drops of bitters at the top and then kind of decorate the foam with it. But to get that exact layered look that is on the Happy Sour, what if we throw the bitters on the bottom? And then once everything is poured on top, it'll leak up just the way it looks in the Happy Sour. It's a, uh, I don't know, a few dashes of Angostura. Swish it around so it really helps it kind of bleed in. There's that nice layer of Ango. Now we're going to strain into our glass. So that was too much Ango. I hate to do this. I gotta remake it. Ah. Oh, that hurts. If you wanna help me feel better, remember to become a member so that I can buy a new bottle of this for my dad. Okay, maybe the martini glass is a bad idea. We can try this again. Uh, I'm gonna remake the drink real quick. Be right back. Hey, do you remember that thing I said about these becoming harder to, and harder to film uh, as the night goes on? I accidentally poured an ounce and a half of simple syrup so I ended up having to make one and a half on top of already having to have remade this. So uh, this is gonna last me for a minute. All right, we've learned our lesson. Way less Ango. We're just gonna put like a dash at the bottom. There we go. We'll do two, we'll risk it, two. That should be okay. Again, we don't want it to overwhelm the color like it did last time. I just want it to bleed at the bottom the way it does for the happy sorry. All right. Well, that didn't work. Quick course correction. This is now the mung bean soda. <laughs> no, no, I, it's, it's okay. This is gonna taste good. You can maybe do one dash of Ango at the bottom and it might work. I didn't expect it to take to the color of the Ango. That is like perfectly to the rim though. That looks like a perfect glass of beer. I'm not gonna lie, that looks phenomenal. I remember making this with the Ango on top and it was a lot more green. If you want it to look green, make it exactly this way. Just don't put the Ango at the bottom. And that's our happy sorry. I guess it fits the name because I'm gonna be happy with how it tastes, but I'm sorry that it didn't turn out as perfectly layered as I thought. But honestly, again, that's a really fucking beautiful pour. It looks like the ideal glass of beer. That is crazy how that happened. That's so fucking good. That, mm, I know you're supposed to be, use lemon for a whiskey sour, but honestly, I mean, having made it with lime twice now on accident, that's just really good. It's just really tasty that way. I don't know what to tell you outside of maybe make your whiskey sours with lime. It's sweet without being overpoweringly so. It is sour without being overpoweringly so. It is just delicious because of the Angostura. The bourbon makes it so buttery smooth. I love this drink. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. Honestly, I'm still happy with this. This is a great happy sorry. And that's what, I mean, kind of a whiskey sour is. Whiskey, happy, sour, sorry. You're not gonna be sorry about this. You could down that in one like you would a beer, the way it looks. I don't even know how to describe to you the flavors that are going on here. If you've had Angostura bitters in soda, then you know what those kind of taste like. It's all that Christmassy spices and the cinnamon. It's kind of a showcase of Angostura with bourbon and lime just kind of like kicking it at the bottom. You feel the lime juice, the sourness of it. And then you're feeling the roundness of the bourbon without so much of the flavor. And the flavor just kind of becomes the bitters. No, there's some bourbon in there. There's some bourbon at the beginning and end. Ultimately, it's just incredible. I've changed my mind. 
The tequila sunrise with the champagne at the top, that was really, really good. Well worth your time. All of them are worth your time. If you were to make one of these, just one, if you were a tequila person, make that tequila sunrise. You were a whiskey or a bourbon person, the happy sorry is, oh, you are not gonna be sorry. You are only gonna be happy. You might be sorry the morning after because you're gonna wanna have about seven of these. Oh, just continuing the theme of way too easy to drink. I mean, look at how much I've already gone through. Do I even taste alcohol at this point? No, the burn is gone. Let me take a little sip of this. So I wanna figure out if I'm tasting it in here. Cause I know what my dad likes. He likes bourbons that taste like tea. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, when I said it cut the burn, I apparently meant it way more than I thought I did. This burn, for a good hot second there, nothing, nothing from this. To the point where, I don't know if it even matters what bourbon you use, <laughs> I'm gonna be real. That is my drink of choice. If I'm walking into the Dream Jolt, I am too drunk to say this name. If I'm walking into the Dream Jolt Hostelry, I nailed that one. This is what I'm ordering. I'm ordering a happy sour. This is the drink. Oh, oh, the fact people have been making whiskey sours with lemon juice instead of lime juice. I don't even know what that tastes like. That's not true, I've had a whiskey sour. That is so good. I'm sorry, this is a personal boast. <laughs> Earlier, I gave full credit to the game for the Imagine Sunrise. That was a great idea. This. On the other hand, that is a drink that I could have every night and not complain ever. Okay, I might complain tonight, but only because I've had three very sweet drinks and this is not helping. I cannot sell you on this drink hard enough. If you like whiskey or bourbon in any way, even if you don't, you taste so little of it. It is so much about the Angostura and the lime, you will love this drink. The lime gives it that richness, the simple boosts that. The Angostura is just big, big man walking through the room. He is storming in, and Lime Juice is his hype man. Lime Juice is holding the boombox, playing his theme song as he stomps into the bourbon. That makes sense to me right now, and I doubt it will make sense to you but my God is it accurate. Once you try this, you will know exactly what that sentence means. I've had most of this drink on camera over the course of maybe 10 minutes, probably five. That is how good this is. This is so smooth. It is so good. I am so happy this is what I ended on. It's incredible. This is everything I want out of a drink. I am so happy I made that, and I am very drunk. So thank you so much for watching. I have been Steve Sakai. This has been the Honkai Star Rail Dream Jolt Hostelry experience. It is shocking. The more drunk I get, the better I get at pronouncing that name. I really, really actually enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it, and I've got four others written down. So if you want to see another one, please let me know. If you want to see me make drinks inspired by characters from Honkai Star Rail, Genshin Impact, Honkai Third Impact, any of them, or especially Zenless Sun Zero when it comes out, I'm very excited for that one. I would be more than happy to do so, so please let me know if you want to see it. I will absolutely make them. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being a member. If you are and seeing this early, thank you so much for even liking and commenting and subscribing. I, I appreciate it so much. It makes these videos so worth it. Here's the part where I would quote the video game as some kind of ending. But as we've established, I haven't played it yet. Keep Choo-chooing through those stars, Honkai Star Rail fans. <laughs> and remember, I will always be a better fan than you are.